Hello guys, I'm back after a long break. This time the video is for my second year friends who like me are struggling in microbiology and so I hope this video would help some of you. There is a lot to mug up in this and for the things which could be explained, I have tried to do that part. So let's get on to it. Acute bacterial meningitis. So first definition, it is an acute purulent infection of leptomeninges. Purulent means pus forming infection of leptomeninges. Leptomeninges is pia matter and the arachnoid matter. Including the subarachnoid space characterized by increased neutrophil count in the CSF. Always remember guys, whenever it is bacterial meningitis or any bacterial infection, the neutrophil count will always be raised. Then common causative agents, so streptococcus pneumoniae, meningococcus, streptococcus agalacti, H. influenza and listeria. Now what is the pathogenesis of this bacterial meningitis? First, how it is spread? By droplets of respiratory infection while in close contact like in kissing, sneezing and coughing. Then once it is spread, what is its root in the human body? So first hematogen is spread by blood, entry through the choroid plexus into the subarachnoid space. So choroid plexus is present in the ventricles of the brain. From there, it travels to the subarachnoid space and causes inflammation and infection. Then direct spread. So from the nearby infection site like otitis media, mystoiditis, sinusitis, these all are nearby the CSF. So from there, the infection could spread and cause acute bacterial meningitis. Third is the anatomical defect in the central nervous system like accidentally during the surgery or in trauma or congenital defect. Now what are the predisposing factors of acute bacterial meningitis? So age. In neonates, their immune system is very immature so it can lead to this disease. Then transfer from the mother while in pregnancy and increased permeability of the blood brain barrier. Second is vaccination. Vaccination reduces the incidence of meningitis. Simple. Third, if there are any of the CSF shunts, it would facilitate the entry of pathogens into the meninges. Fourth is the breach in blood-brain barrier, means the tight junctions of the blood-brain barrier are disrupted and so there is loss of capillary integrity through which the infection can spread. Next is, what would the patient manifest uh, in this disease? So first is, general fever vomiting severe headache and altered consciousness then what are the signs of meningism or meningeal irritation there are three particular signs you have to remember this nuchal rigidity kernick sign and brudzinski's sign nuchal rigidity is stiffness of neck it resists the passive flexion then what is kernick sign hamstring stiffness so due to this inability to straighten legs when the hips are flexed at 90 degrees. What is Brudzinski sign? When the neck is passively flexed, it results in spontaneous flexion of the knee and hip. Then in infants, fever, irritability and bulging fontanelli. What could be the complication of this disease? The meningitis can spread to the parenchyma of the brain and can cause meningoencephalitis resulting in decreased consciousness, seizures, strokes, and raised intracranial pressure. Then, in particularly meningococcal meningitis, means the meningitis which is due to meningococcus bacteria, the purpuric rashes are common and very specific. Now, the last and most important part of microbiology is lab diagnosis, which you have to remember. So, uh, line-wise we will go, first specimen collection and transport, then cytological and biochemical analysis means cytology is cells so number of cells the cell count is very important and biochemical analysis means the biomolecules which are raised or decreased in this disease then microscopy of csf in this we will see the gram staining then direct antigen detection culture serology serology is detection of antibodies in the serum of patient then molecular methods last First, we will start with the specimen collection and diagnosis. So we can collect CSF and blood. CSF is obtained by the lumbar puncture. 
it is transported immediately and if any delay is expected then incubate it at 37 degrees celsius then blood it is collected in the automated blood culture bottles back tea or alert for particularly meningococcal meningitis we saw that uh, purpuric rashes are common so we can take the scrapings of the rashes or the nasopharyngeal swab or pus it is transported in the steward's medium and inoculated in the thayer martin medium which suppresses the growth of normal flora simple now cytological and the biochemical analysis csf contains more than 1000 leukocytes per microliter in this particular disease and these leukocytes are mainly neutrophils as we saw above then the protein count is raised and the glucose count is low or absent the csf pressure is highly elevated there is nothing to be understood in this it is purely ratification now third is csf microscopy so the csf is first centrifuged and then gram stained uh, in gram staining we see the morphology of the bacteria this morphology of gram stained organisms gives clues for the initiation of the empirical antimicrobial therapy what is empirical means guess work when you see the morphology of bacteria you can guess the type of bacteria and you can start the treatment okay the fourth one is direct antigen detection so from csf the csf is first centrifuged and latex agglutination test is done using latex bead coated with the anti capsular antibodies so basically what we do in this process we take the latex beads and we coat anti capsular antibodies against the antigens which we suspect in the csf so if the antigen and the antibody agglutinate then this test is positive which proves that the organism you suspected is present in the csf okay then from urine uh, it is particularly for streptococcus pneumoniae and the test is immunochromatographic test next is culture so the media we use for csf is enriched media that is chocolate agar and the blood agar and differential media mcconkey agar then blood culture it is collected in bottles like the brain heart infusion broth or automated blood culture back to your alert identification is by automated method that is multitoff or vitec and then last is antimicrobial suspect uh, susceptibility testing is done by disk diffusion method so what is done in this method you take an agar plate full of uh, colonies of your bacteria then you add antibiotic different antibiotic disk on it after that you incubate it and then check out for the zone of inhibition what is zone of inhibition that if your bacteria is susceptible to the particular antibiotic then that antibiotic would not let the bacteria to grow in some region this region is known as zone of inhibition and outside that the bacteria can grow so this tells us that whether if uh, you can use this antibiotic for the infection or not if the zone of inhibition is there that means the antibiotic is suppressing that bacteria and then you can use it for the treatment next is serology which is done for the meningococci detecting the antibodies to capsular antigens of meningococci in the patient's serum by elisa technique last and the final is molecular method which is mostly preferred because it takes less time and it is highly sensitive as it can detect very few bacteria in the csf2 so it is done by multiplex pcr multiplex real time pcr biofire film array which is automated nested multiplex pcr so this was it i have tried to compress every information in this 10 minutes video and tried to explain whatever was explainable if you liked my efforts do consider subscribing and comment on about it see you guys in my next video signing off this is palak sanghai